I'm Sherry Seiler, a Noboist in the New York Philharmonic, and this is what's in my case. Today I'm going to take you through what's in my case and on top of my desk. These are tools that I use to play the oboe. I'd like to tell you a little about the instruments I play. This one was made by Paul Laubin of Peekskill, New York. It's from Coca-Bola wood and has a special thumb rest that I use to prevent hand injuries. This one was made in London, England by the Haworth Oboe Company. It is made of grenadilla, also has the special hand rest. They're both beautiful instruments. I use them in different situations and I can't really say which one is my favorite. Because oboes are made of wood, it's dangerous to play in cold weather. Sometimes the instruments crack. Most especially they crack in this top joint here. So I always carry a second top joint. This one is made of a synthetic material, so if my wooden instrument cracks, I just put this one on and go on about my business. I find I can tell the difference in tone between the synthetic and the wood top joints, and I prefer the wooden, but this sure does come in handy. In this drawer, I've got staples and shaper tips, everything I need to tie up a reed. You can see all my used razor blades. I go through quite a bit of them. Here are my favorite knives. Splint, thumb rest. Here are all the reeds on which I place my hopes for this next week. They have some potential. I thought I'd make an oboe reed for you, just in case you're interested on in how it's done. I take a piece of bamboo cane, I folded it in half, and now I'm going to put it on the, what we call a shaper tip, so it begins to assume the shape of an oval reed. No longer a rectangle, we're going to put a little bit of curve on either side of this piece of cane. This cane is my favorite cane in the world. I bought it in 1984 and I save it for very special occasions. All right, I just put a brand new staple on this mandrel, which is how I hold this apparatus so I will be able to make the most beautiful read possible. 73 and a half millimeters. And now I begin the process of tying the piece of cane onto the staple. Everything has to be lined up just so and squarely put onto the mandrel. So now I'm going to quickly wrap this, finish it up. The cane is starting to look more like a reed now. I cut the, what I call the ears of the piece of cane off and get to busy scraping the bark of the cane. The bark is the outer layer of the bamboo. It is too rigid to vibrate, so I'm taking it off. Now, uh, if you'll notice, I've got three different knives here. One of them is my bark knife. This one is for the material just under the bark. Um, and this is the workhorse of the knife piece of cane is almost ready to have the fold cut off and become a double reed. Okay. I'll take a razor blade. I'm going to cut about a millimeter off the top of that reed. Now it is a double reed officially. I can insert my plaque and you'll see two different blades of cane. 
now I go about the business of making the reed thin enough in the right places so it will produce a sound that we call a crow, which is just two pieces of bamboo cane vibrating together. Let's see if it will make a, a crow. And just for fun, let's Let's hear what it sounds like on the oboe. I doubt it's going to be very pretty, but I want to prove to you that it does vibrate well enough to make a tone on the oboe. Sort of honky, a little bit hard, certainly not ready for concerts yet. Don't go buy a fancy reed case. Go to the drugstore and buy an Altoid Mint can. Uh, look at this one, this is really neat. Mystifying Mints, the Ouija board. But I opened it up, and I've in, made foam padding inside here, and I've got myself a really cool oval reed case. I made my English horn reed case using uh, some Dr. Scholl's foot padding. Knives are a very expensive item to purchase. And if you noticed, two of my knives are homemade. Now, how do I do that? Old razors have really great steel. Does your dad have one that he's not using? Or go to the junk store or eBay. See if you can find one. It's okay if it's a little bit rusty. Maybe you want to make sure that it's not rusty right at the very edge where, the, where you're going to be scraping. But take that knife out of the handle and it'll look like this. You'll need to take your diamond stone and knock this uh, curved part off. Go to the hardware store, they sell handles for just six or seven dollars, and insert your knife into that handle. You've got a really nice, high quality steel, and it's a great reed knife. It'll last you for a really long time. This one, I actually made a form and poured resin in, inserted the knife into the resin, and once it dried, I had a really nice handle as well. So you can see I like to save money. You have eBay, you can buy a lot of used equipment comes up on eBay. Just you have to keep looking every day, looking for shaper tips, whatever you're, you're needing at that moment. Uh, Facebook has oboe groups that Oftentimes you'll, you'll have um, people selling old cane. Uh, now, don't think that old cane is bad. My favorite cane was from 1984 and I'm still using it. Finally, um, I didn't own a gouger until I was out of college. So that's a large expense that you can postpone for a little while by buying gouged cane. Today, I practice scales, major, minor, chromatic, minor thirds. etudes to keep in shape. In addition to those scales and etudes you have to practice. Choose a piece that you really love. When I was younger I loved the Beatles and I would practice Beatles songs. It really inspired me to keep practicing. Secondly, turn your computer off. Don't have your cell phone on. Any distractions will take your focus away from what you're trying to accomplish. And playing the oboe is a lot more fun. Well, I've got a lot more work to do on that read, but I hope I've given you some insight into the crazy life of an oboe player. And that's what's in my case. Thank you very much. Sherry Seiler, signing off.